Hi, this is Kaylee, and we're going to talk about combining energy and circular motion. In this problem, we've got a mass dropped from a height h that needs to make it all the way through this loop without losing contact with the track. The frictional forces between the block and the track are negligible, as well as any other environmental frictions or causes that could cause this to slow down. But we would need to figure out the height of this in terms of m and r and see what we get. So first of all, we need to set this up. Now this is basically a conservation of energy problem. We're at the top. If we release it from there, it just has potential energy at the top. No kinetic energy because we're just releasing it that potential energy becomes kinetic energy as it goes down and then some of it turns back into potential energy as it goes up and at the very top up here we've got some potential energy at that location let's call it A and some kinetic energy also at that point A and we need to figure out what height we need to drop it from to make it through that loop so that's the energy part of it. The circular motion part of it is this. At the very top, if we were to draw a free body diagram, we have weight acting on the object. Now, centripetal force is just another force renamed. So in this case, it's the weight. Well, if it's going really fast, it'll have the weight plus a normal force from the track. But when it's reaching its bare minimum, when it's just barely in contact for that, then the only force that that's experiencing is the weight of the object. So for the minimum, the centripetal force has to be equal to the weight of the object. It, since centripetal force is mv squared over r, and weight is mg, masses cancel, and so the bare minimum speed that we can use is solving for that v squared equals gr. Now I'm going to leave that for right now as is. Let's go back and look at this energy part up here. Alright, so we're going to keep that in our pocket. We're going to have MGH, well in this case, it's capital H, let's go ahead and substitute that in, equals MG at some radius, let's see, well it'll be twice that radius, so 2R, because we're going to say that it's the ground, so that distance will be 2r plus 1 half mv squared. Well, one thing I noticed is that we can get rid of, of these masses. There's one in each term, so each can fall out. So that simplifies things a little bit. Now, let's see. We've got gh equals 2 gr plus 1 half we got velocity we got we want it in terms of of r we want to find h comparing to the radius of our loop and so v squared equals gr g radius of our loop is r so we can put capital r in there another thing we can do is at this point now we've got gravity, the acceleration due to gravity, in each term. So those can cancel. And we're just left with the height is equal to 2r plus 1 half r. So the height we have to drop it from, I'm going to go ahead and put it in fractional form. 5 halves r which is the same thing as 
are. Fraction part looks cooler. So we have to drop this from two and a half times the radius of this loop for it to make it all the way through. Now that's solving it algebraically. Finding the height that we need to drop it from is equal to that. So what if we actually have numbers? Let's give it a try. Okay, in this example, our object is 40 kilograms, still dropped from a height h. We still want to figure that out. The radius of the hoop is 8, and we want to figure out the minimum height we can drop it from for it to make it all the way through that loop. So again, it's mostly an energy problem. So the potential energy at the start equals the potential energy and the kinetic energy at the top of our loop right there. And the same thing happens when the centripetal force is only equal to the weight of the object. That's when we have the minimum speed that it can go through that as. And so that becomes mv squared over r equals mg. Masses cancel. And so I want to solve that for v squared. gr equals v squared. Again, I want to leave it in that form because I know what's coming. But I can actually go ahead and calculate this because gravity is 9.8, R is 8. That gives us a V squared of 9.8 times 8, 78.4. Meter squared over second squared because that's velocity squared. We'd actually have to take the square root of that to figure out the actual velocity. But again, we're going to save that till later. So back to the energy. MGH, which that's going to be a capital H, equals MGH1 plus one half mv squared. And let's say this is on the ground, so that height is twice the radius, so it's the diameter of the circle. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. mgh equals mg2r plus one half mv squared. Now I am going to go ahead and do a little simplification because I've got mass in each term. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. But that's the only simplification I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and work it out long. And so we get 9.8 h equals 9.8 times 2 times the radius, which is 8, plus 1 half v squared, but v squared is 78.4. And I want to solve this for h. So I'll first determine what's on the other side. So 78.4 divided by 2 gives me that, plus 9.8 times 2 times 8 gives me, over on this side, 196. I'm going to divide that by 9.8, and we get a height of 20 meters. Now, in the last problem, we figured out that the height, with no numbers, we figured out the height had to be 5 halves of our radius. Well, let's just double check that. 5 halves, our radius in this case was 8. So, 5 times 8 divided by 2 gives me 20 meters. The exact same answer we figured out there. So, yes, you can solve things algebraically, and then, at the very end, put in your numbers. 
Thank you for watching and tune in again for some more physics. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will do some more physics for you later. Goodbye.